get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Jim Shields. He's co-founder of Board Meetings International. It's a company that specializes in retreats for entrepreneurs and their children that focus on deepening the relationship between parent and child through experiences, as you can see through the surfboard in the back, some of the experiences. In his 20s, exactly, in his 20s, Jim partnered with best friend Brian Scrone, and they've been best friends since three years old, which is crazy, and they went on to create a multi-million dollar real estate company that generates over $15 million per year, and he's the best-selling author of the book, Fire Sale. Jim, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being, I really love being here, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. You know, a big breakthrough for me was the dreaming room is huge, something that we learned and has totally changed my life, yeah. where kids share what they're really passionate about and they have to get up and, and give a talk to the whole group. It's very supportive. Like yeah, t- talk members. about the dream room, yeah. Well, the dream room is something that we learned years ago, Brian and I, from a guy named Michael Gerber from the E-Myth. Sure. Um, yeah. And we had attended his dreaming room. And at this dreaming room, almost 15 years ago, that's where we came up with the board meeting strategy and the retreats. We talked about them, and then it took another five years to actually, or even more, to start doing them. Um, and the dream room is this. See, Walt Disney, the, the story is that Walt Disney um, used to use dreaming rooms to create Disney World. Hmm. Um, he would put himself in a room with blank canvases and say, I don't want to talk about unions or you know money problems or this or we can't and, and lack of technology. We're not going to do that. We're going to create something totally different yeah. that we're passionate about. Um, w- without limits. And it's a very interesting space because I don't ever remember being put in that space when I was in school. Um, I don't remember my parents, even as good as they did, introduce me to Napoleon Hill, putting me in this space. So yeah. when we sit in this room, Jeremy, okay, so the age range this time was 9 to 23. Yeah, big range, yeah. Oh, big range. I spoke for about 10 minutes, had them close their eyes for about two minutes. And next thing, um, our retreat director and, and, and my business partner's wife comes down and goes, are you guys almost done? We're in the, the downstairs mastermind room. I said, no, we got to keep going. They worked diligently for over an hour on these blank canvases. Mm. I mean, a nine-year-old. Because, and I, I would just ask them questions that got them thinking. Yeah, what do you ask them? Yeah. I just say, what are you passionate about? Not your parents, not, not your best friends, not what people are going to think is cool because cool fades. What are some talents you don't even like to talk about? What are things that you're afraid to write down because you don't think you deserve them? Right. What would you like to see for yourself in, in 20 years? Right. And, and it's a blank canvas. You write the rules. You can write it in pictures. You can write it in words, whatever you want to do. And what I do is I start by showing mine. From 15 yeah. years ago, and mine in 15. Do you have years one ago. around here? Oh, I do. Oh. I do. Um, I mean, oh, here it is. Yeah, I've already put it in my drawer. So, so I say, and it's. I said, I'm going to prove to you that this works. I said, look, these are my scribble words. Add, you know, out the wazoo. That's amazing. And you're like you a can, beautiful mind. Yeah, yeah, you can't exactly. <laughs> Not as crazy, but. Close. <laughs> um, so basically what this site says, I'm going to build a real estate investment company. We had just started investing in our real estate mm. and build up a whole bunch of rentals. And then I'm going to start doing something called board meetings where it's parent-child retreats. You even one- knew that then. So yeah. It all came out by setting the space in the streaming room. Mm. And, and I said, we're going to have some surf. We're going to do fun lessons. We're going to teach mindset, money, and people skills. We're going to deepen the relationship while having fun little activity, like all these things I wrote out and I'm yeah. showing the kids, I'm like, where are you right now? You're sitting in front of me. We've never known each other. And if I hadn't wrote this out, we wouldn't know each other. Right. So it's, I think it really inspires them where it's the authenticity where I've still held on to mine. It sets the um, stage, yeah. sets the stage and, and then they go deep and then they share. And one of the, the biggest rewards for me, Jeremy, is at these retreats, so many entrepreneurs, and again, we're not a troubled teen camp, you know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Most of our people, in all fairness, have a, a good relationship or a pretty good yeah. relationship. They just want to make better. Right. But even these good parents and, and entrepreneurial parents, they're busy, and, and sometimes the kids haven't felt comfortable to open up, even if they have a good relationship. Yeah. When they share that dreaming board, 
the parents all go, I had no idea they were passionate about that. Mm. I had no idea that they wanted their life to look like in 20 years. And again, what do we all want? We want to support each other's passions and dreams. Mm. And I'm saying, mm. here is the key. They've just shared what they want to do in a very focused environment. So to see the kids and parents talking about that, the other kids cheering and, and giving suggestions, yeah. it's a very magic moment. And it might seem a little woo-woo or overly holistic to some people, but hey. I don't think it seems that holistic at all. I mean, it's almost like a, a child creative way of getting their passion out and almost goal setting. I hate to use goal setting as it seems too structured for that type of thing, but it's, it's sort of in that, that direction. Yeah, and I think and goal setting is important, but again, too many people set goals that aren't their own. Yeah. Um, and this gets to what are you passionate about? And I'm real clear on that. I said, yeah. I, don't, I don't care what your parents want. Right. I care what you want. And the parents know that, that I say this. And if they can start from that core of what they really want or things that are within them that they don't even feel comfortable talking about, that they yeah. think they have a talent in, now we have them, they can set goals around their deepest core values and passions. Yeah. And that's when they can really mean something. But yeah, it's not an overly structuring goal thing, but it's just yeah. a vision. Right. that they can start to work towards. So what's some so, of the things that have come out that uh, surprised the parents that the kids wrote down? Um, there was there was a, a boy who wanted to start a DJ business. Um, he loved music, and he since has. Um, that was a pretty cool one. There was, there was a, a boy that I remember, um, he loved space travel. He absolutely loved space travel, and um, they had no clue. Hmm. That he wanted to do this, and since that he's gone to the the NASA camp and done this and all that, um, and he was afraid to talk about it. Hmm. Uh, there was um, a couple of the older kids that wanted to get in certain types of philanthropy in their own businesses that that they 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 thought people would laugh at them for, uh, and then they found core support not only from a, a big thing is there were people that shared their endeavors not only with entrepreneurship yeah. or or their, their more philanthropy service side. Yeah. And what was cool in the group is I, we saw other parents step in and say, I got a connection with that. Because we're all entrepreneurs. Right, right. They're saying, I got a connection for that. So the fun uncle approach steps in where this you know other cool parent that's not my own right. has a connection. They've been able to set that up and, and, and they've connected in certain ways. There was one girl who wanted to um, do drawings for, uh, I think it was DreamWorks or one of the groups. And Steve Sims said, oh. I man, watched oh. his video, yeah, his testimonial yeah. with his with his son on yeah, your site, he, yeah. Yeah, he's hysterical. And he introduced this girl to someone he knew who he had done. You know, Stevie does these crazy things and he's hysterical to spend three days with him. <laughs> to so, I mean, they look at him they're like, wow, look at this cool guy. And he, he was, Steve was the fun uncle to a lot of the kids there. Um, you know, and that's when entrepreneur parents work together, what you say t to your kids, Jeremy, might not be as well received as, right. you know, the surfer with the curly, bushy hair, you know, pushing them onto a wave. I've yeah. kind of earned that. And same thing with you. Whoa, right. this cool doctor with his own show. What you say to my boys might be better received. And right, when we work right. together with that fun uncle or fun aunt approach, it yeah. really comes together. Yeah. So I've seen that a lot at the retreats before. Yeah. Yeah. One um, thing that strikes me, it's really powerful is the vulnerability. How do you get them to open up like that? Obviously, you're actually really good at that, just opening up and, you know, being authentic is not really the right way to put it. But in same thing with what you need these kids to open up to really see what they're passionate about. How do you foster that vulnerability and get them to open up? You know, I think um, we've cheated again just with our structure. Yeah. Where when you're when ev every person there is one on one with one of their parents. They're in a pretty safe environment, um, and there's no distractions, and we've already had fun together. See, we don't just jump up and go right in. We, we do very little lectures. It's a lot of discussions and activities, but most of the mornings, uh, we're out having fun on the beach. And the old saying, once you get them laughing, you can tell them anything. So we're sharing our love of the ocean. Uh, you know, 90% of the kids might try to surf, and we get them up on their first wave. So there's a fun trust with us. Yeah, okay. And then... Anything we teach, Jeremy, again, less is more. We teach very few lessons, but we go deep into them. And my business partner and I personally show how it changed our life. So the first day with the most, I think one of the most touching things we do is called a connection sheet between the parent and the kids. It's three questions, mm -hmm. total game changer of the relationship. I showed them how I had done that with my dad years ago. And doing that sheet was one of the things that allowed my father 
to let me give him a kidney because he was a stubborn old Irishman. He said, I'm not taking a kidney from right. absolutely not. And that connection sheet, honestly, Jeremy said, look at what I value in my life. If you don't let me do this, you're not letting me live on purpose. Right, right. Um, so I was almost able to use it in a good way to do something very special. And I think when you put it in there and, and I challenge them, we, we're good at challenging. To say, look, you can go light on this or you can go deep. Um, it's up to you. But here's what happened when I went deep. And, and they step up. I, I just, I hear all these things about teens being selfish and obnoxious. And sure, they can be. But you get them in the right environment, man, can they shine. So I think we just, the environment and the fact that we step first and we personally show them, hey, we're not just making you do this to do this. We've done it. Here's what it did for us. Mm-hmm. You know, and we haven't talked that much about the real estate business at all. What are some, a few of the big lessons and milestones from the, the real estate business? <laughs> okay, I laugh because I had a few people that, um, that I've been doing board meetings with and they've been helping with marketing. And they called me like six months ago. Wait a minute, you have to, what do you, you do a bunch of real estate investments? Like, and I don't, I, even though it made our bones, I don't talk about it because I respect it. Um, I really appreciate it. It's not my, my main passion, but I, right. you know, it is, it is my financial resource, really. The board meetings feeds me some, but this is what feeds me. So that's why I was laughing when you said that. Yeah. Some people go, I didn't know you did real estate investments, but we actually do a large volume. Yeah. Um, and, and it, again, it's a simple business model where, uh, I have one specialized skill besides our board meeting retreats, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. I can take a, a imitations. Little house, no, I'm just imitate. Yeah. Oi, oi, have a passion. <laughs> Shut up, McCartney. Sorry. So Philip's going to kill me when he <laughs> hears this interview. <laughs> I have, I have, uh, I have one specialized skill. I know how to take a house, fix it up, and either sell it or rent it. That's it. That's how I built all my wealth. Yeah. Uh, that one specialized skill, and I think therein is the lesson. Keep it simple. Um, go deep into something. I see so many people at these different events trying to go on the surface and just take a little nibble out of this strategy or that. Right. We've gone really deep and, and being able to go deep in it has been able to produce volume. You know, And people say, well, why aren't you doing apartment buildings? Why aren't you doing mobile home parks? And I say, look, after doing a thousand houses, we're just starting to get good at these. Why am I right. going to switch now and become the new kid on the block? Yeah. So I think being able to go deep into something that's not sexy, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, people are in nowadays with all these exciting businesses. Geez, you buy rental property? Yeah, you know, it's, it's just not. <laughs> it's not that fun. Um, so I think it's it's. But I, I like the tangibility of real estate. I grew up near Wall Street. The, the 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 stocks didn't make any sense to me, but the tangibility of leveraging real estate and sweat equity made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I went with something that I I thought I would enjoy and be good at. And sure enough. Um, we did, and, and we almost went bankrupt in 2008. Mm -hmm. I'm very open and honest about that because, look, values dropped 60%, rents dropped 40%. It's crazy. Um, yeah. But what we did is, before we figured out what was next, oh, it was awful. It was awful, and that's seven years ago. The, the, the longer we get away from 08, the happier I am business-wise. But we held our feet where a lot of people didn't. Um, and I think that the thing that, that, that kept us aboard was is that saying that a, a mentor of mine taught me, before we figure out what's next, figure out what's important. And when we were going through the, the turmoil of the end of 07 and beginning of 08, those six months were, I can't tell you how hard they were. We, it, it no longer was about me and my business partner. We made a decision to say, we are going to protect our investors through this. Mm. That became our goal. Most of them were close family and friends who said, we don't know how, but we're going to do that. If I had not changed it to evolve to that higher level, we would have gone bankrupt. Because so, to keep my, old, old, my own luxuries and that, it was just too painful. I could have rebuilt. So... Time to you're the higher that. you're the higher purpose, higher purpose, yeah. and that really helped us. And not only did it help us, but that word spread about our integrity. And then a lot of other people who wanted to get in because the market had dropped so quickly came to us to say, "We know you guys can be trusted. We know you're honest. We want you to help us find investment property. Uh, can you do it?" And so we were able to go through a lot of pain, but then also start to rebuild just by keeping yeah. our feet and doing yeah. the right. Thing. One big lesson, Jim, that sticks out for me when I uh, read and listen to your story is the Mr. Bill Lawyer story. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. That you you didn't take that advice. Yeah, yeah. So everyone's going to have a Mr. Bill. And you were Bill. young there. So I want you just to talk about that because what, what was going on in your – or what happened? What was going on in your mind that you, that you didn't take that advice? 
Uh, Mr. Bill was, we went and as you know, we saw an attorney in Santa Barbara, California. We had just started this invest, real estate investment company in Bakersfield, California, about two hours inland. We'd already done five or six successful deals, made money. Um, we said, okay, time to get corporate structure and he was referred. We went in and we started to explain to this very distinguished attorney. I mean, his, his desk was worth more than my car easily. His suit was worth more than my car. You know, I, I'm in my little quicksilver khakis thinking right. I was all dressed up and I felt, I mean, I felt not dressed up. Uh, and as me and my business partner started to passionately explain what we were doing, he just held his hand up, started to laugh at us. And, and then he went into a very disciplined, documented argument, like an attorney will, of all the reasons our business was going to fail. Hmm. He, and, and he ended it with saying, now, I don't want to disappoint you boys, but I think you'll be back to waiting tables in a couple of weeks. Right. Now, I, I wasn't even a waiter at the time, but I guess I looked, you know, I had a waiter look to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and I think what it was, Jeremy, is, is I had done my homework. I had been really studying hard into this. I listened to the simple numbers um, that we were taught. We had gone to some experts in it. And I was able to look at, first off, had he done any real estate deals? Had he done any real estate deals in Bakersfield, California? Was he the butcher telling me, you know, how to bake bread? Right. Like I like to say, don't let a butcher tell you how to bake bread. Right. Ask, ask the baker. And, um, and really, I think the thing that was our biggest strength is we've already done a half dozen deals and they've made money. Right. So what, what scares me about that story, Jeremy, it's a great story because we did overcome. We said we're not going to listen to, you know, the butchers tell us how to bake bread anymore. Yeah was if I hadn't done those five or six deals before I went to see Mr. Bill, would I have kept going? Right. And I don't, I don't know. Um, I yeah. don't know the answer. But uh, You validated it. Yeah. We did. We validated it. So it's, everyone is going to have a Mr. Bill. Yeah. We have to be very careful of opinions, yeah. especially expert opinions from a person who is not an expert in a certain area. Right. You know, tell, them, tell them to pound sand you know, politely and, and move on. Uh, go to the experts. Right. <laughs> You know, I love that story and I love that because it's all about taking advice. Who you take advice from, how do you take advice? And it could be someone who really cares about you and loves you. It could be someone close to you who's giving advice who's maybe not the expert and doesn't have experience with it. So I loved hearing that even from a young age, you guys just started and the lesson learned there. Um, yeah. Jim, I appreciate your time. This has been fantastic. Um, I could I could keep you for another hour, but I'm not going to. Um, but I have one last question, and before I ask it, just tell people where can they find out more, where the shade we should be pointing people towards to check out. Yeah, I mean, again, I think to, our goal is to see at least a million entrepreneurs using the board meeting strategy. Mm -hmm. So I think it can change them. So if they want to learn more about us and get a free copy of the book, The Family Board Meeting, just go to www.qualitytimerevolution.com. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to watch that talk I did at Joe Polish's annual event, get a free copy of the book, um, and even stay up to date on some of the stuff we talk about. Uh, if you're more interested in the retreats because you're saying, this sounds phenomenal, we've never heard anything like this, I love mastermind groups, I want to get my kids involved, you can go right to www.boardmeetings.com yeah. and you can learn about the retreats. We'd love to have you. It's my most passionate work. I love doing it uh, and I think it makes the biggest difference. It's, it's where I feel the most on purpose. So we'd love to have you join us. Yeah, and I suggest people check out the, the blog posts because they're really well done. Um, so Jim, my last question is, you know, you've had a lot of success in business and life and what's been one of the proudest moments for you? You talked about him, Jeremy. I mean, donating a kidney to my dad, no one can ever take that from me. That was, that was a tough decision. I could have walked away and had every excuse not to do it, um, but I did it. Uh, adopting my boys, um, pinnacle, pinnacle. I mean, most people are like, oh, that's the guy who cries on stage because I just, I get so emotional. Um, so that, and then not, not the business success itself, um, but the fact that in end of 2002, 2007, 2008, we stood against the fire, we did what was right, and we came out better than we did before. Right. Um, those, you know, between personal and business, those are the three um, that I really value the most in my marriage. I, I love my wife to pieces. Um, but th those would be it. Yeah. And we didn't even get advice from your wife, everyone else. Oh. So, so, yeah, Shh. tell me, because she's, you know, we know she runs the show, right? So, she, what, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, what is the big lessons or what do you, learn from her 
uh, my wife is is an extremely passionate, loving, um, alternative education type. Again, she's trained in Montessori and Waldorf. And she's been the one who's really helped me figure out home environments. Mm. Um, she's taught me and brought up teaching to that where, where um, one of the worst things we can do is overschedule our children. She says it's, it's what it does is terrible. We're scheduling them more than the average CEO. Yeah. That's not That's okay. Yeah. And, and it's okay for children to feel bored once in a while because if they're bored, that's where creativity can start to come out of it. Mm. Um, so just the family rhythms, the compassion that, that she's taught me, you know, the things she's overcome in her life have been an example. Um, so she is probably the most dedicated family person and teacher I've ever seen. Uh, and it's pretty cool with our board meetings and the things she continues to do with consulting families of how to simplify home life yeah. to watch her shine in that. So, and I just learned so much from just watching her. Yeah, because she has a big role in the board meetings too. What is what are some things that she does? She she's besides my business partner, she's my main brainstorming strategy. Yeah, uh, and I always say like what she's taught me through Waldorf and Montessori education and. Um, and, and, and simplicity parenting, which she's involved with, uh, she helps structure a lot of the things. Um, she helped set up a lot of the formats. Um, when, when I write something like second place myth of adoption, she's one of my editors and I try to do the same for her. Yeah. So it's more, she's more of a mastermind partner and yeah. she's been handling certain logistics from the retreat, which she's stepping out of to focus on our family and other things. Yeah. Um, but she truly is. She brings an uh, an, an angle of edu- traditional education, formal education, to it, and kind of turns it on its side the way she knows that I'd want to, and helps right. me see things that I wouldn't understand, which yeah. is so important. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure I don't know if you're the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Jim, this has been hugely valuable. I really appreciate uh, the time, and everyone should check out uh, boardmeetings.com. Yeah, I appreciate it, Jeremy. It was a pleasure talking with you today. Always. Thanks. Take care. Between my eyes, walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.